Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to a brand new episode of my Minecraft Let's Play. We're starting once again over at the Gunpowder Farm, which kind of seems like it's my new home over recent episodes. But hopefully by the end of this episode, we will not have to do any more work over here whatsoever, which will be very, very nice indeed. It means we can actually move on to other things. So you may be asking yourselves, Nock, why are you tearing down absolutely everything that you worked so hard and so painfully put in place at the last episode? Well, the truth is I actually came to the realization post episode that why did I build this thing over the water when I have actually built these little areas here where there is more than enough room to fit what I need to right here. Seriously, that's a question I generally asked. I was like, why did I do it? Who knows? So um, I'm actually starting off with today's episode, not working on anything new, but I'm actually gonna be tearing this whole thing down. I should probably put a stop to the flow of items there. Got some Terran Raptors, let's use those. But yeah, we're gonna put a stop to the flow of the items here for now. And what we will do is I will tear all this down move it across here so it's actually on this platform and then it won't look so bad, possibly. But yeah, there's a lot of tearing down here to be done, so let me get right to it and I will be back as soon as I have finished. All right, guys, we are back after completing the repositioning of the storage system. And as you can see, it is all done. We are now completely on this ledge. I've got a nice little walkway here where I can come down and access my chests as I need to. I'm gonna put some item frames up here once I go head back to the base and they will go in here. But you see, I've kind of surrounded the whole thing with cobble, apart from the back, don't look at the back at the moment. And then we have like an access area here using a couple of trap doors, which I'll replace with a door when I go back to the base and get some wood. But I might block this off just to make it nice, but it doesn't really matter too much at the moment. Main thing is our storage system is here and it's, fully on this platform we created and it's nowhere else. So as you see, it's flashing away there as some items flow through the system. And yeah, we've got quite a bit of gunpowder now, almost a full double chest, which means we need to actually think about what we're gonna do next. And that is we need a sugarcane farm here because I wanna make this as self-sufficient a farm as possible. So because we've got the gunpowder and we've got the string, I plan on putting a sugarcane farm over on this side and a bamboo farm over on this side. That way we can make scaffolding and we can make rockets, which I think is going to be really good indeed. So I'm gonna go and grab some resources for this build, mainly some pistons and some sugarcane itself. One thing I have overlooked, however, is the fact that I may need to expand the storage or shrink the number of chests here that we have for the simple fact that we're potentially going to want to be storing some bamboo and sugarcane if we're building farms over here because there really isn't much point in having a separate storage system for that bamboo and that sugarcane so i'll have a think about how i can do things and then once i've got some resource covered we'll be back and we'll start building up our sugarcane farm Woo! -hoo. Okay guys, so I was thinking about how we are gonna make this sugarcane and bamboo farm. So I imagine the bamboo farm will work the same way. And my first design was this, whereby I would let the sugarcane grow to too high and then it would get popped off, the bottom two loads get popped off using this piston here. The problem with this was that the sugarcane would sometimes fall here and how would I collect it? So under here, I put in a hopper mine cart, which like goes underneath and gathers up all of the sugar cane. And to be fair, this works fine. This is absolutely fine. The nice thing about this is as the server goes off, it only triggers one of these pistons and yeah, it's all good. However, I'll be perfectly honest for what I want on my mob farm, it's gonna to be too complicated and it's gonna take up too much space underneath the mob farm. So I don't really think this design here is fit for purpose. So. I went back and I have come up with this design instead. So instead of popping the sugar cane off at three high, we're actually gonna do it at two high. So we're only actually gonna get sort of like one off at a time, which is fine, that's not a problem at all. And by doing that, that means the sugar cane is guaranteed to be popped off 
over into the middle when the piston pushes it, which is why I have a row of fences here, which means the sugar cane will hit the fence and it will drop down into the water stream and then it will get carried off down here. This water stream acts as a dual purpose. It acts as the way to transport the items out of here, but it also acts as the space needed to hydrate this land for the sugar cane to be able to grow. Now, the only difference with this design is I couldn't work out how to do the observer. So I've actually placed the observer just here, monitoring the bottom of the sugarcane. I did try it where the new bit of sugarcane grows, sort of here and above it. However, the problem with that is that the piston creates a block update, so it misfires the observer. What you'll notice though here is that these pistons are actually firing when there's nothing growing on these first two, and that's because it's detecting a block state change. Even though nothing has grown there, there that block has technically changed. Therefore, it fires the piston. So it's a bit of a trade-off, unfortunately, with this one, whereby to have this design here, we actually have to have the pistons going off a little bit more than they were before. So then the plan here will be to have a water stream right in the middle of our platform that actually drops down just underneath our platform. And then on the mob farm, what I can do is I can then route this up to the main pipe where our gunpowder and string is coming up from. So we can actually throw it all into the same storage system. We'll do a bit of reconfiguration. We won't have as much storage now for gunpowder and string, but at least we'll have this getting sorted and stored when we are AFK. So let me jump back into my world and I'm going to build this module up and I will come back once we have done so. And here we are with the entire sugarcane farm built up here. And as you can see, it's, um, this is quite nicely on this little ledge indeed. I've had to run the channel underneath the platform as you'll see the water stream is kind of going down a little bit and that's just so that we can keep one stream of water running for this entire farm and then it filters back into the main pipe which then leads into the rest of our storage system. So with this in mind, we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side, if I can come up with a design for the bamboo farm. I'm gonna try and use something very, very similar indeed, and then run the pipe in to this main area, and then we will have both sugarcane and bamboo automatically harvesting, and that will definitely help us with our fireworks and any scaffolding we may want going forwards. And this is what I have come up with for my bamboo farm. So on the face of it, I started off with a similar design to the sugar cane, but then I've kind of adapted it a little bit. So the biggest difference is that with bamboo, it doesn't actually detect at the base when a growing state has changed on the piece of bamboo. Therefore, the design in general has to be pretty different to our sugar cane. So what I've done instead is I've put my observer on the third block of this third one here, but then kept everything else growing at a too high state. Now, I realize that that's not very efficient because we're gonna be waiting a rather long time for that to grow up in three blocks. However, the reason I've done that is to try and counteract some of the waste that we're getting. As you can see here, there was quite a bit of bamboo that was just falling down onto the dirt below. And the reason for that is I'm chopping it off uh, too high and the too high one gets pushed into the middle, but sometimes the one that grows three will just drop straight down and just sit there. So it wasn't a particularly efficient farm. So I just kind of felt if I was losing that bamboo anyway, why not just stop it from growing there and at least we won't just have entities lying around on the grass. Like I said, it's not the most efficient of farms, but it will do for what we need. I don't imagine we're gonna need a great amount of scaffolding throughout our lifetime of this playthrough, but as you can see already, we have already got almost five and a half stacks of bamboo just from the short time I have been AFKing. And uh, as you can see, I'm almost full up on gunpowder, which is absolutely insane as well. Sugarcane, ah, you know what? The bamboo's been growing quicker than the sugarcane, which is rather surprising. But there we go. The farms are all finished. I've just 
got this temporary platform here for AFKing. I might change it up, but you know what? As far as building on here now, we are all done and we can start throwing ourselves now into other projects. All right, guys, we are here in the nether and I think it's about time we went looking for some ancient debris so that we can actually make some netherite gear. So I'm actually going to turn on my coordinates helper here. We're currently at level 65. I think we want to be down to level 11, which is a good place to be looking for ancient debris. So what we're going to do is with our scaffolding that we have just built, we are going to carefully make our way down. Do hear lava around and about, but we're so close now. Okay, we've made it to level 11 which is where we wanted to get to. So I'm just going to get my scaffolding all the way back up to the top, and then we will come back down and see if we can't dig around a little bit and find ourselves some ancient debris goodness. Whoops. So when it comes to mining this stuff, there is various techniques you can use. There is strip mining, there is explosives. There's all sorts that you can use, but I think we're gonna just try and use a bit of everything, I think. So I think we'll probably start off with a bit of just strip mining at this level and seeing what we can come up with. And there was a, a technique, it's kind of strip mining, but every time you come across an obstacle, you kind of turn and go in a different direction. Uh, so you don't deal with any sort of gravel or blackstone or anything like that that's going to take a long time to mine. And the reason you do that is just so that you're actually kind of like speeding through a little bit more than you normally would. So if you hit like a pocket of lava, for instance, that could potentially be a bit of a bad thing. We'll just carry on a little bit here. Okay, so yeah, you literally just mine in a straight line until you come across an obstacle and then you, you make a turn and you go in a different direction and just see what you can uncover. So we're at level 10, so like we've hit gravel there, so let's head this way, for instance. And we're just going to go at it like this for a little bit just to see what we can actually find down here, if anything, of course. Uh, so I'm going to play around and so I'm going to dig down here for a little bit. We'll see what we can find and... I'll come back with some results. Hopefully some positive results. Jackpot! We have found our first piece of ancient debris. Let's mine around it here. Let's see how many pieces we get. Looks like we're only going to get two of this ancient debris goodness. But I've literally been going for probably about two minutes since the last cut. And we've already found some. We've had a couple of direction changes in that time. We've hit a couple of pockets of lava. But uh, no, so far so good. Everything is going really well. Apart from the fact I've got to keep an eye on my pickaxe here. Because we are kind of running out of some durability here. So I'm going to carry on going for a little bit longer. And then I'll head over to the end and re-enchant my pickaxe and then we can come back down maybe even it'd be worth making some makeshift tools as well just so we don't have to keep coming back down here but yeah first piece of ancient debris acquired and hopefully we can find some more oh look at that look <laughs> ask and you shall receive there is another two pieces of debris there at least oh another three pieces i think we've hit two veins there so uh, let's just mine around just to make sure there are no more in this little area here. We've got enough pieces now to get our first netherite ingot, which is pretty exciting. So I'm going to carry on mining just for a little bit longer until I've almost depleted this pickaxe. We'll go and create a netherite ingot, I think, and then we'll go and repair this tool. So exciting times indeed. All right, so we're back at the base and my debris is in the smelter and here it is. 
Here is our first lot of netherite scrap. So now we're going to need to head on over to the village and make use of our blast furnace, which is over there. And then we can create the. Oh, no. Sorry. I'm jumping ahead of myself. I need to actually combine this gold with the netherite scrap. Yep, there we go. There's the ingot. There's my ingot. And now we have that. Now we can head on over to the village. And boom. Old Silky is now a netherite pick. Our quest for upgrading our tools to netherite has begun. Yeah, I'm quite impressed on how quickly I managed to find that first lot of ancient debris. So I'm going to head over to the end. I'm going to go and repair my tool and then I'll head back down into the nether and we can carry on trying to find some more ancient debris. And then we can start to upgrade some of our other tools. So I've just been down here for about 20 minutes and I have used the pretty much the entirety of the netherite pickaxe's durability and we only found two ancient debris this time around. So I'm going to change it up a little bit and I'm going to just dig a little bit of a tunnel this way hopefully. I've got to be very careful though not to completely wreck my durability here on my pick. I really don't want to lose this pick. What we're going to do here is we are going to try the TNT method. So I don't know how far, how much, like how far apart these need to be to be able to chain the explosion. Maybe if we try leaving two and then adding another one. I mean, I've only got four pieces of TNT on me at the moment anyway, so I can't do too much, but back up, back up, back up, back up. Okay, we seem to get a chain reaction there. And let's have a quick look. We didn't get anything this time around, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and make loads more TNT. I'm going to go and try the explosive method now. So I'm going to head over to the creeper farm, grab a load of gunpowder, and then I'm also going to need to grab a load of sand as well. So I'm going to go and grab up some resources and then we'll make a load of TNT and we'll come back and see what we can blow out of the nether down here. All right, a bit of resource gathering later and you could say we have a few stacks of TNT ready to wreak some havoc. So let's go and place a load of this TNT down here. We're going to carry on down this path that we've already kind of started with the previous explosion. So we just need to make a really long tunnel here and then we will blow things sky high. Maybe I should have gone to a tunnel that I'd already dug in. TNT in place and cub. Boom! This was our first run on the TNT method. And as you can see, it does leave a nice trail of destruction. You certainly get a wider area than if you're just doing the individual strip mining that I was previously doing. However, you'll notice that, you know, there's still no guarantee that you're going to get any ancient debris. These two here on the right hand side are the only two in this whole section that I was able to uncover. And I think I used probably around half a stack of TNT to blow this whole area up. But you know what? It's not going to deter me. So I'm going to head back down and set up some more TNT, blow some more, and see if I can't find myself some more glorious ancient debris. All right, guys, we are back, and we've been using some of our TNT, and as you can see, we've made a bit of a base for ourselves down here. The reason for I'm gonna actually spend a little bit of time in a moment on a stream, just kind of setting up a bit of a nether base in this sort of area i kind of feel it's be pretty cool so i might even bring the portal down so next time you see this area in the video it might all look a little bit different but uh we have used a total of i think we used about three and a bit stacks of tnt and from that we have got 14 ancient debris so we've definitely had a lot more success 
with the TNT method than we did the normal sort of straight line slash strip mining. But like I said, I'm gonna head over onto a live stream now. We're gonna do some more blowing up of the nether and look for some more ancient debris and tidy this up. So once the stream is over, we'll be right back and hopefully I'll have lots of cool things to show you. All right, guys, welcome back. We have finished the live stream and I didn't really make as much progress as I thought I was going to make. I ended up not doing any of that nether base area that I said I was going to try and do. What we did do though is get lots of netherite ingots. And as you can see, I have now got a sword, pick, spoon, and some leggings which all have netherite attached to them and we have seven ingots left over during the live stream i was able to find 42 pieces of netherite scrap which gave me a total of 56 netherite scrap so once i made them into ingots i ended up with 14. i've already used seven of them as you can see i've also netherited up some of my tools in this chest and yeah, we'll be sure to go and do some more netherite grinding again in the future. It kind of lost track of time in a sense. I used all that TNT and then I went and made more TNT with that shulker box and, and filled it up as much as I could. And then I went back down and yeah, we just sort of chilled out for two and a half hours. So if you get the opportunity in the future, why not come and hang out with us on the live stream? We, we don't do anything serious in those streams, but we do get some of the longer, more boring tasks completed so that... We don't have to do them in videos. Anyway, I just want to end up here and I want to lay the foundations or dig out the foundations or something new I'm going to build hopefully in the next episode. All right, so we are now over here just off to the side where a lot of these birch trees are growing and this, this over here is where we are going to work on a brand new build. And what I'm going to try and build is some form of kind of like wizard's tower. And then what I'm gonna do hopefully is bring all our brewing stuff over here and have a nice wizardy, magicy kind of looking tower to do all of our brewing and stuff just to kind of add. Cause let's be honest, it's been a very long time since we actually did any sort of building project. I don't think we've actually done anything proper since we did our skeleton and zombie farm under the ground. So what I'm going to do here quickly is I'm going to sort of build up the area where we're actually going to build this. And I was going to build this on the hill, but I kind of think it would be cool, almost as if it was like erupting out of the hill, so to speak. So kind of we'll start it off maybe in the water a little bit. We'll build like a foundation coming out of the water and then we can build it around and then all the way up. It's going to be a very high tower and uh, I estimate about... 3,000 or so stone bricks that might go into this project, maybe even more, but definitely for the main sort of structure, I think we're gonna be using about 3,000 stone bricks. So let me go and grab some dirt and then I will start marking out where this is going to go. Originally, I was gonna build it over in this sort of area over here, because I've been deforesting a lot of birch trees recently because my wood supplies have been low and I've needed lots of wood for different bits of pieces but I think if I have it over there I won't be able to see it from my house and that's certainly a key thing that I want so let's think about where we're gonna build this I think here would be a relatively cool spot to build now I'm gonna come out a little bit just so that we are building out on the water right about here yeah and then we can build foundations down so I'll use this and we're gonna go seven across here and we need to come in two, then one. And let's do the same over here. Dirt probably wasn't the best thing to use here, but I can raise it up a little bit, I guess. We're gonna have to take out a lot of this land, land side here, though, to be able to do what I need to do. So if my calculations are correct, I should now have a circle running all the way around here 
Now I just need to demolish this hillside area. And now a quick warning for anybody who's triggered by floating trees to turn away. So we've got our area all marked out and dug out here. As you can see, we've raised up the border. So this gives you an idea of the circumference of the tower. It's going to be a good 50 plus blocks high in the air. So it's gonna go up a considerable amount. And we're not gonna to worry too much about this massive dint in the land side here, because like I said, we once we the tower is built, we'll maybe try and try, I do say try because I've never done it before, but do some terraforming of some description just to kind of build it in and look a bit more natural. So like almost like the tower is emerging from the land side. I think that would look pretty cool indeed. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to bring us to the end of this episode of Minecraft. We had some good nether adventures and we have finally drawn a line underneath our mob farm. In the next episode though, guys, we will be back over here in this space starting work on our wizard's kind of magic tower, which I'm really excited for. So thank you very much as always for your continued support. It really means a lot that you guys tune in and watch these videos. And if you can, be sure to try and check out a live stream i'd love to see you all over there but until the next time guys take care and bye, -bye.